first of all, what is the state of the way we start talking about that in terms of the rehabilitation? Well, I mean, the rehabilitation has been completed. We are just rehabilitating sections of the lab. Um, that was done by Ghana Railway Company Limited. Once they managed to reintroduce the passenger trade, it meant that they completed the rehabilitation. We are not going to do any further rehabilitation. We are not going to extend it further. The line beyond Kappa will not, the narrow gauge will not be rehabilitated further. That they won't go beyond this area. That's why we are ending with a narrow gauge. And so the rehabilitation phase uh, has virtually come to an end. If you look at our new master plan, that hopefully will come out soon. We don't even talk about the narrow gauge. So we talk about new construction. What is the state of the new construction? The construction on the Temanpakanan line, about 97, 98 kilometers, is ongoing. They've laid about 56 kilometers of track. They started working on the river, sorry, the viaduct over the water river. They started uh, working in the water region across the water river. And so that one, they say about 60%. If you look at the the, the line that is being done in the western region, I think as that has been slowed down more than that other line. Because as far as the line the western region is concerned, where they've reached certain sections of where they've reached is that they should start laying the track. And the people to lay the track are outside the country. So unless the, the borders open, they can't even come. But that should tell us something that we need Ghanaians who can do this work. And that's why I'm so happy that we are establishing this institution to train Ghanaians to do the work. In fact, COVID has taught us a lot of lessons. And one of the lessons COVID must teach every nation, not only Ghanaians, is that you need your own uh, nationals to be able to do certain things. Because look at us, we have, even if you have the money and you want to uh, complete your railway network, because the specialists are not in Ghana, you can't continue. And so uh, I think that I'm so happy that this uh, uh, this edifice or this uh, infrastructure will be made available, we partner with UMAT and we'll, in two, three, four years' time, you must be able to see Ghanaian companies who are building the railway. Let me tell you, uh, some time back, it was only one or two Ghanaian companies that could do asphalt work. I, I think so do contractors or so was the first one we did a class in some years ago. And those days, asphalt was CP because uh, a class to Cape Coast was a Japanese company. From Cape Coast to here was a uh, CP, construction pioneers, which came from Germany and so on. Today, <laughs> Ghanaian companies are doing asphalt all over the country. And in four, three, four years time, five years time, we should be able to see Ghanaian companies doing railway construction all over the country. That's why I'm certainly happy that we are going to develop the expertise and able to provide the human resource so that people can do the work themselves. The set agreement or certain exceptions to Western Vietnam, what does the agreement entail? Well, the, 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 the agreement with Amanda, the last, we signed three agreements with Amanda. The first agreement with Amanda was five kilometers, and that was from Kudoko to Ishii. The second agreement with Amandi was from Ishim to Mansur, about, 70, about uh, 70 kilometers. The reason why we ended at Mansur, because Mansur is the end of the double line. Now, when you sign an agreement to construct parts of the line past Mansur, it will affect the operations of the railway company, because the railway company brings manganese from Isuta, and that is how it pays its workers. So one of the things government recognized and did was that we need to find money for the railway company to enable them to survive even when they are not operating at at full capacity or at 100 percent so thankfully government managed to find the money for them now they can pay themselves up to next year in march they also have enough money for operations they are also buying equipment and so on for uh, capital expenditure but in addition to that we are going to start working on the line after Mansu for Mansu to Huni Valley then also from Kojokrom to Takradi, not Habo, Takradi port. It's about 10 kilometers. What you must know is that what Amandi did first between 2012 and 2017 was a narrow gauge line. And it was from Sekendi to through Kojokrom to Takradi Habo, not sorry, Takradi port, not Habo. We are going to do about 8 kilometers of standard gauge railway line within the Habo area. Then from, Kujo, from Takradi port to Kojoko, we are also going to change the line from narrow gauge to standard gauge, and then we are going to continue to Hunivan. 
total, giving us a total of 102 kilometers of track by the time they finish the contract. The contract, the entire contract is supposed to last 42 months. The stage we've reached now is that we are doing the environmental impact assessment, environmental and social impact assessment, which includes questions like compensation and so on. All of that has to be done before we start. The minute that is done, we are working very hard so we can take it to Parliament before Parliament rises in August. Once we take it to Parliament before Parliament rises in August, then they have to mobilize and hopefully by October with an castle and they will start.